at stake is really whether the world has a chance to um, stay around 1.5 degree or shoot past it. And I think the international collaboration is incredibly important. And with uh, the pledge put forward by India, we had a major surprise at the conference because nobody was actually expecting that. Um, we do have pledges from uh, now more than 71 countries for net zero in uh, the future. We have more than 150 pledges that updated their targets for 2030, Australia not being one among them. Um, but so there's great movement in the direction of uh, limiting climate change and bringing fossil fuel em uh, emissions down to net zero, which is required to hold further global warming. Yeah, so as you mentioned, India has now pledged net zero emissions by 2070. China has made the same commitment by 2060. But as you say, the summit wanted stronger commitments for 2030. Yes, so on the one hand, it's incredibly important to uh, get everybody on the same page. What climate science says is we have no choice but to go to net zero emissions at some point. And the sooner we go to net zero emissions, the lower we can limit our future global warming. And so even if we wanted to hold global warming just at two or a catastrophic two and a half degrees, etc., there's no way around stopping CO2 emissions. And that end, uh, that uh, goal, that ultimate um, vision where we have to go to, uh, that is incredibly important to to, um, have agreed upon. So the net zero goals are important. However, the only thing that really then counts is what action is going to happen this decade, because that is the action where these leaders are in power and where they can turn the boat around and peak global emissions. We now have for the first time in history pledges on the table that actually uh, make us believe that we can peak global emissions this decade, but it's by far not enough. We have only about one third of the gap towards a well below two degree target closed. We need another two thirds of actions before 2030. And countries like Australia who do not want to update their target by 2030 is a really a um, larger setback for the international community. Ironically, for Australia, it could also be in its self-interest because Australia could profit from being an energy powerhouse in the net zero world by having so many renewable energies like hardly any other country. And yet Scott Morrison, in his opening remarks at Glasgow, mentioned the 35% emissions reduction that Australia is expected to reach by 2030, even though there has been no change on the commitment of 26 to 28% emissions reduction? Yes, so, so we we basically have on the world stage um, Australia who comes there with a net zero plan that is empty, that is hollow, that is just nice words. It kind of tries to um, support voluntary carbon markets. Every other country, look at the UK uh, pledge or a net zero plan, for example, in comparison, has detailed sectoral targets, has policies, how to achieve certain efficiency gains, how to turn the transport sector around, how to uh, put investment into the building sector. And Australia is really seen as coming there with a um, hollow plan. I mean, Scott Marison and the pictures sometimes talk for themselves. Uh, he's there rather alone by himself. Um, but on the other hand, we do have to applaud um, India for coming forward with that pledge, even though it is 20 years later than what the world needs to see in terms of India's per capita emissions. They are by 2030 just at around 3.7 tons per carbon. And Australia by 2030 with its um, uh, targets will still be by 16 tons of carbon. So we are having that inequality in per capita emissions still for a long time in the future with the no action from Australia and then some pledges from India.